Welcome back to Hammond's Dream, where, after another storm between episodes, we have enough money to push this button again and continue to hope and pray that we get an actual alpha. Uh, looks like we'll need a rest right afterwards. I'm only willing to go down to 50k here because it is just immediately post-storm. Well, anyway, once we get that bread, we gotta move all the galleys. I don't think I'm gonna breed anymore. 28 feels like a good number. Um, and then after that, it'll just be the raptors, and then we'll uh, get started on other species. Not sure entirely which one I want to do next. That's probably a discussion about <laughs> what the canon species list actually is. Um, and I'm going to make a judgment call on that. That is not accurate, necessarily to the original intent, but is really two, two no traits. Ow. <clears throat> um, but yeah, what I was saying is it's not going to be probably accurate to what the original intended list was, um, but it's better for it, I think. And I think the original intended list has very little evidence in the films as to what it actually was. Um, most of the species are pretty much set in stone. But I, I think really like the last... The last two are a little circumstantial, especially the 15th species. Um, and there's a lot of different arguments you can find online as to what it should be. Well, three primary arguments, I guess. Maybe four. Through the power of unrepentant cheating, I have finally gotten a Brachiosaurus egg. It took ten eggs, five clutches, to actually get a social humble Brachy. Uh, although I did have a social humble with uh, large appetite, which... Defeated the purpose. Um, so yeah, million bucks, we can hatch these guys. That's going to be uh, a moment. Started to question... It, so here's the thing that'd be interesting to look at. It'd be interesting to actually experiment with the gene system to study if the odds of getting a gene... Like, what that would actually be, depending on the amount of genes that are in the actual genome, right? So, any given dinosaur in this game can only have three genetic traits, right? Which means that if you put a 50% chance on a trait, but there are four available traits that can get into the genome, it is not 50%. Right? We, we bred 10 eggs. We saw humble and social maybe close to 50%, but 10 is not a rigorous statistical sample size, so it'd be interesting to test that. It would also be interesting to see if the genes that do pop come in a particular order. Like if, um, like we should be able, basically what I'm saying here, let's look at a gene. Um, shit, I can't because I don't have a spot. Well, anyway, what I am trying to say, we'll use this one as an example, right? Social comes before humble on this list here and the other genes will also have some spot in a list right in the ui they're always listed in a certain order doesn't mean they're rolled in the same order right if you have four genes that are a coin flip each and you can only have three max if you win the first three coin flips the fourth is automatically lost so if you do statistics on the occurrence of each of those four genes even if they're supposed to be 50 percent the fourth gene will not show 50% of the time because whenever any of the other genes all pop, it's automatically excluded, making the fourth gene actually sub 50%. And I have no idea how that actually works in the game. <clears throat> it definitely has to work in some sense just because it's limited. There has to be some bias um, against the genes. Like, even if it's random... It still would mean that like the chance of these popping is sub 50%, right? Because if you have four genes that all show 50% of the time, they can't show up mutually together, so they all have to be sub 50%, some amount. It'd just be nice to know if that was flat or if it was biased towards a selection list where the higher entries show up more consistently. Well, that's a good little, little conversation to buy some time to make money in-game. Um, we'll be back when we have the actual Brocky money ready to go, probably after a storm or two. All right, we're 43 minutes into a recording session, but we finally get to hatch the Brachiosaur Alpha. 
I believe we have two currently in the park, so we'll need to hatch the other two sitting in storage here to get the full set of six out. Um, is that correct? Yes. But, you know, hopefully the addition of two more Brachiosaurus really helps push the finances forward towards getting even more Brachiosauruses. Well, they're down. They are happy. We've got enough margin here. We can definitely swing six. How the fuck is there a storm happening right now? Already time for another storm? Incredible. Uh, number three is the Alpha here, which is also the only 1993B. Which... Is... Bluer? Maybe? Compared to the other one? Yeah, this one's definitely browner. Yeah. Okay. Well, what new horrors wait on? Um, let's get these open. Uh, yeah, we need a comfort check. Okay, how are we... Oh yeah, because the Jeep broke. The Jeep bugged out and was stuck, so now none of the chores are done over here. Fantastic. No, you go do that. Then you go do this. I would like to know if these raptors are hitting the fence or not. Oh, wait, I can cheat. Well, not cheat. I can check. 80% comfort. Yeah, so the raptors are also minus 20, which puts them in the red. So we do sedate here. Okay. Oh, and there goes my medical facility. Um... We probably are due for a tuberculosis outbreak immediately afterwards, too. Cool. <clears throat> Fantastic. Uh, the power's cut. Wow, both medical facilities. That's, uh, evil. Don't see any gaps in the fences. Major fracture on a galley. I do currently have the herd split up, which I need to finish moving them over. Um, I just haven't done it. I guess now's a good time to do it since uh, we gotta sedate some of them anyway. So you... And there could be sedated. Alright. All right, another storm passed. Brachiosaurs hatch. That gives us all six of the Brachies for the full herd. Let's put one here and chuck the other one over here somewhere, maybe. Actually, let's put them way down here in the woods. Don't know where their actual territory is. I mean, I guess it's kind of filling in some gaps. Getting a decently populated pen here for the herbivore enclosure. Well, oh, I see there's a tainted feeder. So we need a Velociraptor. That's the last thing for like phase A or phase zero, depending on how you want to think of it. Let's breed ourselves the big one, the Alpha. So we're going to stick with the 93 Raptor here, of course. Just got to redo the gene spread. Uh, Intolerant is good for us. Just because it helps with dominance. Okay, this one should not be a nightmare to get. Only problem is fit. Maybe being a spoiler on getting humble social and intall. If we get humble social, we're good. We just can't have intall with one of the other ones. Um, let's do this. We'll save the one gene, I believe. I'm going to believe it works. Hmm. I guess we'll put you on this task. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure the two we have are just in tall, right? Both of them. Because we have nobody to mess with dominance. Okay, so I mentioned before talking about what is the 15th species in the park. So let's talk about Jurassic Park canon and what was in the park. 
15 species. No more, no less. Jurassic Park the game could say there were other species that weren't exhibited. Fine, whatever. Point is, they're not part of the park. Tylosaurus is a future thing. Troodon was removed. So let's not even talk about that. What do we know? Seven species appear in the film. Those seven species are in this park right now. Velociraptor, Dilophosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Gallimimus, Triceratops, uh, Brachiosaurus, and Parasaurolophus. What does that leave? DNA vials, right? When Nedry steals the DNA, you see Metricanthosaurus, Proceratosaurus, and Stegosaurus. Now we're up to 10. Uh, there's the brochure map, one of the many incorrect maps of Jurassic Park that people like to bring up all the time. The brochure does appear in the film. The brochure should be considered canon. The incorrect map should be considered placeholder in the context of the universe, concept art, or just a rough layout of the park. Something like that, right? It's possible the brochures were just mock-ups and not real brochures that were going to be given out when people actually came to the park as customers. But we could assume the species on there are probably correct because the DNA vials uh, match some of the species seen in the brochure. Proceratosaurus is in the brochure and Metricanthosaurus is in the brochure. So by that evidence, we assume everything in the brochure is canon, which adds Herrerasaurus, which is also seen in Jurassic Park the game, Add Segisaurus and Baryonyx. So that gets us up to 13. Furthermore, you could see in the film, if you have a very high resolution version of the Nedri scene, at one point, one of the little DNA capsules he slides into the Barbasol can is labeled BA. And you can also see that Brachiosaurus is labeled BR. Um, so Baryonyx is also tangentially supported by evidence in the film beyond the brochure. On the same note, um, there is a DNA vial that is seen that is, I believe, CO. Um, might need to fact check that one. Um, and is probably meant to represent Compsognathus, Compsognathus, however you want to say that. Um, which, of course, appears in The Lost World. However, we don't have any evidence for that beyond that vial and... I believe there's like some sort of ambiguous like photo that's running around of what may or may not be a behind the scenes like 1993 JP shot that involves copies. Um, but I've never been able to verify personally that that is actually from 93 and not some other later thing from like 97 or something. And again, it's not a thing from the film, so it's not really evidence for cops or for copies being in the actual original 15 species list. The DPG does not include Compi. They add Compi to the list as something that snuck onto the island. We're ignoring that. Uh, what they have in that slot is Corythosaurus, which is a baffling decision for the DPG to make because the DPG says that Corythosaurus wasn't cloned until like 1999 at the same time like Spinosaurus was cloned, which is dumb. It makes no sense. And the reason that makes no sense is you could see a specimen card in the Lost World film for Corythosaurus, which means it was on Sorna in 1997. Otherwise, Roland Tembo wouldn't have an info sheet for it. So, because the DPG decided to put Corythosaurus on the park list, and because it has an info card in the Lost World, meaning it was on Sorna in 1997, I have opted to include Corythosaurus as one of the 15 species over Compi. I believe, I personally believe it was probably intended to be Compi, but we just don't have anything that proves that, which means it is open for interpretation. It simply has to be a species that starts with C and has an O somewhere in its name, which is like every dinosaur that starts with C. So Corythosaurus, perfectly reasonable. That's what we're putting in the park. That's ultimately the whole point of what I'm getting at. Well, let's do the research here for this. Boom. And we'd start digging that guy up. Now, you may, astute viewers, may have noticed that we got to 14 species, right? So what's the 15th species? Well, in the dining room scene, where they're seeing like all the talks and projector slides of the park, 
we do see in the background that Jurassic Park in the film has an aviary, which means the 15th species, therefore, must be a pterosaur, right? Otherwise, why would you have an aviary? In The Lost World, uh, there is a mural that you see near the end when Nick Van Owen is calling for help or whatever. And that mural shows Jurassic Park and it shows the T-Rex as it appeared in Jurassic Park. It shows the Dilophosaurus. I think the Velociraptors, maybe. Um, the big thing is the Dilophosaurus. It is very clearly the in-gen frilled Dilophosaurus exhibited in Jurassic Park, right? So we can assume from the mural, which shows the visitor center, shows Jurassic Park, shows things that are in Jurassic Park, including the real-life appearances of the dinosaurs that were displayed in the park, that the mural actually accurately represents the park. And the mural features pteranodon so by extension pteranodon is the 15th species makes sense right the lost world in production also included geosternbergia but it does not not ever appear in the film beyond the info cards that show it and we have no evidence that the pteranodon that would have been on the pterosaur species that would have been on nublar we have no evidence no reason to think it would have been the geosternbergia over the pteranodon so Personally, I fall on the side that the pteranodon species exhibited in the park is the one seen at the end of the Lost World, and not the JP3 pteranodon and not the Geosternbergia design. Um, and I will die on that hill. I think that is unambiguous. Border, maybe not quite proof, but a very unambiguous uh, sign that pteranodon was in Jurassic Park. However. There is one other contender for animals that maybe were in Jurassic Park. And the other contender was introduced to us largely by Dominion. I think it's not unreasonable to assume that the 15 animals that were exhibited in Jurassic Park were probably the first 15 animals cloned. Like, I would assume that, for example, Mementisaurus and Pachycephalosaurus, animals that are seen in the Lost World, were not mature in 1993, which is why they were not planned to be exhibited uh, in Jurassic Park itself. Again, we can't say that for sure, but it, it has a logical ring to it, right? We'll just delete this because it's uh, unpowered. So, if we take that to be... A logical conclusion if we think that's real that's true that's reason let's not say true if we think that's a reasonable approach to take to try to determine like what species are in jurassic park well dominion has that flashback scene that like vhs tape or whatever the hell it was i don't remember i've only seen dominion once and hated it that shows the micro in 1986 it shows uh what, what was the the lady who cloned herself what was her original name Wait, what was the kid's name? <laughs> uh, I forgot the kid's name, too. Point is, the lady that cloned herself was worked on Sorna in 1986 and is seen with a Microceratus. So Microceratus was cloned in 1986. Uh, it was probably one of the first dinosaurs cloned. So you can make a pretty strong argument that maybe Microceratus was in Jurassic Park. We're not taking that approach because we don't have... I don't have personally good justification for where it would slot into the 15. If I believe the first 13 are set in stone, the only flex slot is the C0, CO, which has to be something that starts with C, and the 15 species has to be a pterosaur. There's no way I can fit Microceratus in. So we're just not doing it. Social humble fit. Pretty good. Or we could just do the social humble intolerant and ensure that the big one is always the alpha. Uh, I think we'll do that. I am willing to hatch this right now with what money we have. We'll do the you though. So yes, there there is my thesis statement, my long-winded explanation and commentary on what the species list I'm going with is going to be. Now I think <laughs> I think there's another another take you can do on the species list. And it's this. At the beginning of Jurassic Park, we see the Velociraptors being relocated from their actual paddock on the park tour to the holding pen. 
And when the raptors, only two Corythosaurus fossils, what the fuck? When the raptors are being transferred to the holding pen, right? That's because they're probably being removed from the park. Jurassic Park, the game might even say something like that. Like that might actually be in the lore somewhere that the Velociraptor was essentially being removed from being exhibited in the park, which is why they were put in the holding pen. Even if that's not officially said anywhere in any like main canon marketing material or like side canon shit like a game, you can assume that based on the events in the film, right? Otherwise, why else were they being removed from the park proper and stored in a holding pen? No, it is in Jurassic Park the game because the whole point in Jurassic Park the game of the Herrerasaurus, they explicitly say the Herrerasaurus are a replacement for the Velociraptors. That's set. So, yeah. Anyway, my point is, there's probably a version of the 15 species of Jurassic Park that doesn't have Velociraptor in it. Right? And so that's a way you can bring in Microceratus. You can say that Velociraptor was removed from the park list, wasn't actually completely removed from the island yet at the time of the original film, but it was going to be removed when the park officially opened with 15 species Velociraptor was not going to be one of them. And that allows you to bring in Microceratus, right? You end up with Herrerasaurus taking Velociraptor's slot and Microceratus coming in somewhere else. Problem with that is Velociraptor and Herrerasaurus are both in the brochure map. And if Herrerasaurus was only brought in to be a park exhibit after Velociraptor started being a problem, why are they both in the brochure map? That makes no sense. Uh, is this worth processing? 76% probably is. So that was another idea I had for like doing a park build. That's essentially what we did in, um, the, the custom campaign build we did. Um, but I've decided this is going to be, this is a version of Jurassic Park that never ran into issues, which means that there'd be no major motivation for removing Velociraptor. Although if Jurassic Park doesn't really run into issues until the events of the film, the Velociraptor is already being removed by then, you could still argue for it. Point is I had to make a call and I've decided to make the call of keeping Velociraptor. I really want that authentic Jurassic Park experience. You really need the Raptor for that to be included. Um, so yeah. Keeping Velociraptor, we're not going to put Microceratus into the first 15. We will, of course, bring it in later. Probably as the 16th species, to be honest. Um, I'll probably push the button on that immediately. But, uh... But, yeah, that's, uh, that's my thoughts on the 15 species, I guess. <laughs> You've heard a lot of thought. It's been a... It's been quite the rant, I guess. All right, well, let's get through the old storm here, and then uh, we can bring out these Corythosaurs. I don't think we need to watch this storm. It's probably going to be fine. Currently fighting through a tuberculosis outbreak. Shocking, I know. Uh, fueled by a bugged medic team that just started driving backwards away from the things it was trying to shoot forever and infinitely into a back corner where there were no dinosaurs. Because this game, the vehicles are just busted always for some fucking reason they just you can't have a single park build or your, your vehicles just don't eventually glitch out and do insane broken nonsense okay uh currently we are just at like 2.1 i don't know if we ever hit 2.5 but like no that is the magic fucking number for this goddamn tuberculosis vaccine all right corothosaurus is done though So, uh, oh my god, I'll fucking fill you back up. The amount of money spent just darting 40 dinosaurs, like, every third storm because tuberculosis gets out of control constantly is, uh, deeply infuriating. Let's move the hatchery. So I'm gonna put the hatchery on this pen, which I mean, I, I guess we just gotta, like, stick it over here somewhere. Away from the tour? 
really how is that obstructed by tour track i guess because the release area is just too close we could um put an extension on this like we don't have to have this in on the fence this can be on its own little like extension off of the fence it's like a holding pen area No matter what, I'm not going to be within range of power here, though. We'll just have to put it its uh, put in its own power supply. That's fine. So it's to be about there. All right, let's do it. I don't know if I want to run like another zigzag path through here. We could just run something in the back. Kinda. Like, none of the visitors are gonna use this. Holy crap, can you snap please? Jeez, there we go. So this can just connect up wherever it wants to. I think that was crooked. You can't trick me. I can tell when you're lying to me, Path. Yeah, sure, that seems fine. JP pylons, please. We'll just do that. Just run the line right over. Should be fine. Oh, this might be... It doesn't matter. If this is close enough to power the fence, it doesn't change anything. It's already powering the fence. All right. Uh, Yeah, that has to be moved, so we can go ahead and keep doing this. Are you... Get the little shit. Get that little shit. Get that little shit. Oh, that's the... Not a little shit. That's a fucking ranger station thing. You! Stay here. Your job is not yet complete. Come on. Please. Please. Oh, my God. Okay. This should re... Oh, really? No, that's the medical team. <laughs> this should be still upgraded. Yes. Oh, fossils are not actually done yet. This actually beat beat uh, the timer. Why do you hate me? It's fine. We can just, we'll just make it a little wider to like match kind of the width of the building as an excuse to have that not be the worst thing ever. Now we need a full size gate if the whole goal is to like open this up to release animals into the pen. So we have to use a not a JP gate. So these guys do have a new skin. Oh, they have two. You know, I don't know where this 2001B skin comes from. We can use it. If I decide I hate it, we can just... Uh, get rid of the extras. And we should at least check it out, just to see what it looks like. Oh, another argument in favor of uh, Carithosaurus. The novel version of Jurassic Park does feature double hadrosaurs in the roster. Um, specifically, Myasaura and Hadrosaurus. So having two hadrosaurs in the film version of the park makes sense. Of course, the other big difference between the version of the park in the book and the version of the park in the film is that the park in the film is predominantly carnivores and the park in the book is predominantly herbivores. There are four carnivorous species only on the island in the book, plus the pterosaurs, Ceridactylus. Whereas uh, it's basically almost completely flipped in the film where you have 
as few as depending on which species list you use as few as five herbivores only in the 15 species and that's something that always bothered me about the film species list is how carnivore centric it is um but it is what it is oh yes by the way we gotta do this the big one there she is And just like in the film, uh, she's completely indistinguishable from the other Velociraptors. Because they look the same. <laughs> the big one is uh, not real. 2.3 stars. So we are actually a little low on amenity scores. The real question is going to be where the problem lies. Not here. So yeah, shutting those ones down was fine. So it looks to me like we can probably upgrade to mediums down here. Let's just do one of these. Uh, we'll just do this off screen. It doesn't matter. Okay, so let's see what we got here. We do have, yeah, nice uh, alpha choice. 2001B, 2001A. Okay, well, if we don't like the bees, we're going to have to delete more than half the herd, which is a little unfortunate, but these things happen. I guess we'll just go ahead and open the gate. Also, I was doing some thinking uh, between episodes, but I'm only just now remembering to say it. I think we'll go back to eight Velociraptors eventually. But what we'll do is we'll introduce some Sorna Velociraptors into the herd, or into the pack here. So we'll keep the three, like, 93 style Raptors. To represent the three from the movie and then we'll both bolster the uh the pack with other ones i'm not sure i want to use the sorna raptor the jp3 sona raptors because they aesthetically clash with the jp1 and jp2 raptors so i'll probably just use tiger stripe ones to fill out the group later but that's going to be after the original 15. like phase b is just to uh that is a really nice Corythosaurus skin. I don't know what this is from. It's just included in the film canon mod and I have no idea why this is there. I think this is possibly, is a duck animal that looks like it's a possibly the most underappreciated species in the entire franchise. This guy shows up in like one short scene in JP3 and never comes back again. And that is disappointing. This is a great design, I think. I, I like the Corythosaurus color scheme, scheme quite a lot. Um, and it's unfortunate that it never got another more screen time after JP3. Um, yeah, underrated, vastly underrated animal. And yeah, like the vibrancy, the way the colors pop on this compared to the way it looked in base game. Another great, great addition to this mod, skin-wise. Um, love it. So you want ground fiber, actually, which is not on anything we've already had. So we'll go ahead and throw some of that in here. Then we'll also make sure we thread it in with the various ground foil insufficient fucking funds seriously oh my god uh and with the other well that is very bad timing bro why are you all just there <laughs> go shoot Get into the pen. Go. Okay, uh, I need to find immediately cars to take pictures. We got one here in the trike pen. Oh, 
Oh my god, I can't see nobody else. They're too far away. Alright, well, whatever. Fuck it. Ah. Okay, that got us uh, a little bit of money. That's something. Open all those shelters up. Um, let's go take a picture of the wrecks. Enough money made just in time to start dealing with problems. Okay, let's dispatch you there. Let's make the capture team sedate the raptors because I cannot deal with you attacking fences right now. Let's see if we can catch one in the back there, maybe? No. Never. Nope. Give me, give me back my controls. Okay. Where's the other car? The other car is not at the station. Here, in the dialo pen. Okay. First injury has appeared. I cannot bring it up because it doesn't want me to see. It is a minor fracture on a gallon. Now go get it. Uh, damage to the raptor paddock. Shocking. How could this have happened? I think we have enough money here. We can get through the storm just fine. Okay, injury number two is a major fracture on Dialo. I uh, cannot tell. I'm actually looking at the right one. Yes. Yeah, these tours really get backed up something fierce. Okay, that Dilo is good to go. I can find him. There we go. Pop over there. Grab you. Guess we'll go ahead and slap you on the brake real quick. Now we have no money again. What fun. Oh my gosh. Two more major fractures. Well, that's horrendous. That's actually a really good opportunity for a screenshot. Give me a second. Well, as we wrap up today's episodes, we have a little bit of an issue with the amenity coverage. We are 17 hours into this goddamn park build, shockingly. Uh, and otherwise, ratings are pretty good. We're still dealing, of course, with the fractures from the storm. We have an infected wound on the Dilophosaurus because infected wound is a bullshit. We responded to this guy basically immediately, and he still gets an infected wound as if he'd been left to rot in the field. Nonsense. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're pretty much ready here to uh, keep going. So I suppose the other thing we could talk about is what is the next species, which I guess the next animal to put in the park has to be one of the carnivores. So maybe we should get started on that. Because there's not much left for herbivores. Uh, Stegosaurus is about it. And Stegosaurus is a little pricey. So we can grab Segisaurus here. Or Metrian Berry. I think we'll do Segi next, actually. Nice and cheap. Uh, so we'll grab you, grab you. Get that started. And yeah. So we'll end up leaving this episode here. Uh, 
if anybody knows, I am very curious about this. If anybody knows, oh, I actually found one of the yellow ones. Where in the world this blue Corythosaurus skin is from in the franchise? Let me know. I'm pretty sure I checked on the Nexus mod page and it never explained what this is from. It's a really cool design. I just want to know, like, like, like it's a film canon mod, right? So it's got to be from something. It can't just be a fun design somebody did. So yeah, if you recognize it, sound off in the comments.